So we, we're going to kind of have a, a hybrid here. I know Marty's prepared a, a presentation, but for you guys who don't know, Mike Stith, head of the, the Orange County Batbusters and Batbusters organization, uh, I got to know Ma Mike a long time ago, what, about six years ago, um, just went into his cage in Southern California, brought some former Pride players there, and I'm just watching what he does. And first off, I was jealous because I'm like, can I go back to being 8, 12 years old and, and have that facility uh, and train the way that they do? Um, and then more recently, I've, I've gotten to know Marty through the Corona Angels. I always knew who Marty was, um, but getting to work with him with the Alliance has been a lot of fun and just learning what Marty and his family does. Between these two men, they have eight daughters. And what I figured out, you guys, if, if you adopt me, we could build an entire team of the stiff. And so I, I'm putting that out there, that we can, we can make one team. But awesome. I mean, these guys, they go at it on the field, right? If you think of the rivals um, in our travel ball sports and and Batbusters and Corona Angels. And I know you each sent me a picture. I don't think you know that you did that, but I think you've got, between the two of them, they have about 30 players that are playing in the Women's College World Series here. Um, and I know they're very proud of, of watching them, but these two guys, I think, started as, as dads, right? And have built their careers and journeys and developed a lot of athletes and impacted a lot of young women um, and two grown women now. And so before we get started on the presentation, can you tell the story of how the two of you first met in softball? Do you go first? Do you want me to go? Oddly enough, like many, we, my first time I met Marty, we were playing in a rec all-star game. Um, I was coaching in Chino Valley, and Marty was coaching Corona All-Stars. And Marty, <laughs> Marty got mad because my team, all my team was bunting. We, we come up and start bunting, and what did you say? We don't do this shit. Exactly. We don't bunt. We don't bunt. Um, is, uh, yeah, it should be on. It's on? Yep. You guys, so, you guys, I, I'm a baseball player, so that we went and started, like I say about softball, period, is that uh, Dina came to me at a, at a, when she was seven, and she wanted to play softball, and I didn't, I let her do it, and I didn't coach, I didn't really get involved in it. And so then when she was eight, when she was eight, uh, I said, hey, you know what? Let's go do what most people do. You know, black people do. We, I said, let's go play basketball. So, I, man, I went and, and morphed myself in basketball. So, man, I'm like, man, I went to the junior college coach, and I went and did, learned defense, <laughs> learned everything about basketball. Man, I was going to do basketball. And then Dina came back at nine and said, Dad, I really want to play softball. And I'm like, man, it was a waste of time. And, I, and my wife said, hey, well, if you know so much, why don't you coach? And so uh, I tell people that. And so here's the deal is that so I, I, I did baseball. So we get ready to do all-stars. I, I went undefeated, didn't lose a game, and was an all-star coach and everything else. And we're playing Mike for the first time, a uh, cross-town rival, and he's bunting all the time. And I'm sitting here like, what the hell is he doing? Like, bunny. Like, we haven't even practiced bunny coverage, and we haven't practiced bunny the whole year. So what is this guy? He's like, he's, he's teaching bunny. He's hurting these kids. Like, man, learn it. I just, like, that's the first time I, I was really started doing softball was that all-star game. I'm like, dude, this guy, what the hell is he doing here, bunting with these kids? We won, by the way. Yeah. We won. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. But it's the same. And, and if, you, if you take the environment then to now, it's no different. It's no different. M Marty, Marty was going at it, and, and, and Donna was involved, and, and, you know, and I, I came off the football field, and so I kind of had a different way of speaking and doing different things, um, but it was the same environment. Obviously, at a different level now, what we teach and all this kind of stuff, but uh, it, was, it was a rec all-star game, man, and it, 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 was, it was on. It was, it was fun. Well, I... I don't know about Marty, but I go against the grain in many of these aspects. People will talk about, you know, recruiting and, and you know, I, I have never coached a player to be recruited for college. I've, a, I've coached her to be as best, the best she can be. And I've dug in and tried to get in their personality to find out who they are and what makes them tick and try to demand more of them and try to get them to do things that they're not comfortable doing. The recruiting stuff takes care of itself, and and I know that I we we're blessed with the people we deal with, um, but I've never, and so I've done that from the from day one. 
when we start training them in 12 and under, I don't worry about um, what, whether they're going to go to college. I worry about whether they can angle their glove the right way. I worry if their feet will move. I worry that if they understand drops and what to do, and then when they're hitting some of the things we do, the, the, the rest of the stuff just falls in place. So when you're coaching athletes, the first thing I learned from my uncle was never be scared to lose. Because if you're scared to lose, you'll never develop good players. And I think that that goes hand in hand because I know he's the same way. We, we're just going to do what we do. I don't care what the score is. We're playing in Colorado or something. I'm not trying to win the game. I want to win, but I'm try I may put a person in a point. I can tell an interesting story. Several years back, we were playing Marty at Nationals, and they, I, I think, I don't even know who was pitching for Marty. It was, it was before Megan. But Janelle Mionio was a, was a sophomore on my team, and Marty was beating us for like two runs. And I think in the last inning, we had like runners on second and third. And Mark Campbell's going, you got to hit for Janelle. You got you to hit for Janelle. Janelle's just slapping. And I looked at it, and I thought, nah, Janelle needs to learn how to hit here. And she struck out. And Mark, if, for those of you that remember Mark, Mark's, see, I told you. I told you. And I'm looking at Janelle going, nah, I did the right thing. I did the right thing because it prepared Janelle. Last year she was an All-American. She's done well. But I know you approach it the same way. You guys, I, I, first I always say about this is like a trick question. How do, your, how do your team peak? Well, what are you peaking to? See, and so the first thing you must do is like, again, our first thing we do is we start establishing what we're trying to get accomplished. And I ask, I ask all you guys like this, right? I don't put everybody on the spot, but things that we want to, like, build in a team, right? And so I tell you guys like this about dealing with today's kids is I tell my players, like, man, if you want to be great, you're going to continue to learn, right? And so I always ask my players, like, what did you learn? What did you get from this? Like, hey, after every, every weekend practice that my kids must email me what practice was and how it refers to, and how it reflects to them by Tuesday night at 8 p.m. And so, man, if you don't send that email by Tuesday night at 8 p.m., you definitely not start that first game on Saturday. So I'm not going to put you guys on the spot, but I say, man, this is what I got from Cat, right? Man, I'm a note taker. I'm, I'm going to keep this in my notes and it stays forever. And so you start understanding that thought process is that, man, like the people that I deal with, that the kids that I'm, when I get back home, uh, being great is boring. That's what I got from Cat. Like, like Tony was talking about, like, I'm not going to get all the – the mechanical things and the flip things and all those things. And I feel bad because sometimes, you know, we're in a, in a game and we're, hey, things are starting to hit the fan. And I got my pitcher over there doing this. Oh, this hey, I, get, get going. <laughs> Cut this shit out. Let's go. Cut that flip shit out. Let's go. And it just makes me feel, it makes me, it makes me laugh when they're talking about the flip shit. I'm like, dude, nah, nah. So, but that's the whole deal of understanding, like, if you're not going to learn, then how do you expect your players to learn? So I always challenge my players. I outlearn them. I always outlearn them. And I, and I say, man, then the thing she said is uh, people look for quick fixes. So, man, when I come back and I'm dealing with 12, 13, 14, 16-year-old kids, I did instant gratification. Those are the three things I got, like, hey, dude, that I'm going to carry from this. And I tell everybody, like, when you step in a room and you walk out of here and you think you know everything, I'm going to tell everybody, I'm great, and I know I'm great because I don't know everything. And so, man, when you know that you're great because what you're trying to do is you're trying to learn. The people that aren't great or aren't going to be great or limited to teaching greatness is they, they walk around here like they know everything. When I look at people and I'm like, man, I'm going to get something. I'm going to get one thing from somebody. And so as we start talking about building a team, well, okay, we start building a team. Well, man, who you coach, bro? Who you coach? Who you coach? All right, so you coach game time. Well, what's your team philosophy? Yeah, so see, but as I, as I go and I tell everybody, like, man, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to establish, like, how we're going to play. Hey, man, your first day, your, your, your first day of, of practice or you got, you picked the personnel. So it's not like you guessing. Like, you know, Mike, you're going to know half the people or 75% of your team next year. You know what I'm saying? So you start understanding it. So, man, I already know 75% of my team. So what I'm going to do is this. So when I had uh, 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 Jasmine Jackson and uh, the kid with the Baylor, 
uh, I had them. You know what? Bro, the Jessica Strogans, hey, I'm not giving up no outs to get them the second. <laughs> you dig what I'm saying? Like, hey, dog, hey, we're, we're going to be a steel team. Well, wait a minute. Hey, well, wait a minute. You're, you're looking at your personnel. See, you control your personnel. So when you ask these questions like, hey, wait a minute. Are, are you going to be a bunt team or are you going to be a hit and run team? Well, if you got a bunch of people that's popping up and missing the ball, you probably ain't going to be a hit and run team. So you start understanding about establishing your identity first. Like you say, in picking a team, no, the first thing you got to do is, well, who is your team and what does it look like? Hey, wait a minute. Everybody looks and, everybody looks and you look at, like, Megan Faramo and Rachel Garcia. No, no. I, I played Tony in a 0-0 ball game. What about uh, just uh, in, this week, we, the last time we played? What about uh, uh, Caleb Bousset, who's going to Biola? We played seven innings, right? Played seven innings. We're in a 0-0 ball game. Hey, you know what? She only had three strikeouts. I told her, I told her, I says, man, you did your job, those strikes, pitch to the defense, and guess what? We all caught the ball that day. So that's what I tell every single person is that, man, we talk about three things to win the championship. Number one is going to be elite pitch. You got to pitch it. Number two, you got to have defense. Dude, I'm a hitting coach. The last thing you're going to have is clutch hitting. So you start understanding that thought process of building a team, the first thing you got to do is like, what are we building? What am I trying to get across? So I tell you guys this, your first, in the fall, guess what we're doing? We're building our foundation of what we're trying to get done. Like, I, wanna, I look at my team and I says, okay, what do we do well? Well, we don't steal. Lara Boutte, all right, you know what, Lara Boutte's gone. You know what Lara Boutte was, how so, she was a valuable player? I didn't have to give up an out. Do you have a kid that you don't got to give, give up an out to get the second? And those are the things that we're talking about. So look at your personnel about building a team. What do you got? Hey, everybody, man, you know what? I don't have no pitching. I don't have this. I don't have this. Well, if you ain't got a pitcher that gets swing and misses, you better catch the damn ball. And so you start understanding the thought process like Texas, man. Hey, man, I, I, like I said, we'll see in the slide that I, I look at when people come, I look and I see how many errors they make because that will dictate like their wins. So like Texas, they lost to Arkansas the first game. They made three errors. Hey, the last two games, they didn't make no errors. Texas is going to be tough to beat when they don't make errors, bro. And so those are the things that we're talking about. Like you start understanding or pinpointing what you are working with or what are you trying to achieve. And then that starts, you peek into that level. Like, man, we're playing, we're peeking to us establishing knowing how we play softball. Not how to win, but how we play softball. Like that's got to be your goal.